technology. There's a tendency to view the IDF's actions in a certain way. For example, look at all the white phosphorus shells in this residential neighborhood. This demonstrates conclusively that the IDF was using white phosphorus not as a smokescreen, but as a weapon against the civilian population. The problem here is that, is that there are inherent difficulties in fighting urban guerrillas. You completely disregard by claiming that white phosphorus shells in residential areas are conclusive evidence of using white phosphorus against civilians. But what did I just show you in that CNN news segment? Locals were scared to talk openly, but they showed me a house they said Hamas had used to fire rockets at Israeli troops. By suggesting that it's only civilians in a civilian area, you do away with inherent difficulties and instead side with reckless belligerence. Now, to be perfectly honest, I understand completely why Hamas operates among civilians. Amnesty International's demand is that Hamas not do this. But then what's the moral alternative? Seemingly, it's to place all military ordnance and personnel away from built-up civilian areas. But had Hamas done that, Operation Cast Lead would have lasted maybe a few days because all Israel would have had to do uh, would be to drop big gravity-guided bombs on these purely military installations. The fact of the matter is that if Hamas wants to have even a small chance of putting together a respectable resistance, it needs to be naughty and blend in with civilian infrastructure. Hamas does not have purely military installations, which is why its military presence permeates civilian areas like houses and schools and hospitals and mosques. So just to repeat, this demand made by Amnesty, which is obviously echoed by other human rights organizations in the UN and all that, this demand says to Hamas, just don't fight. And this also works for the IDF. Here's a segment from a video that I made titled Post Cast Lead, in which I talk about this. But in this report that I'm talking about, Falk makes clear, this is kind of interesting, he makes clear as usual that an army is obligated to differentiate between military and civilian targets, typical. And then he says, and I'm quoting, if it is not possible to do so, if it is not possible to differentiate between military and civilian targets, then launching an attack is inherently unlawful and would seem to constitute a war crime of the greatest magnitude under international law. If you're fighting an enemy that dresses as, hides behind, and operates among civilians, you ought to not be fighting them. As cynical as it might sound, human rights organizations really just exist to say, can't we all get along? And they also provide valuable pressure on interested parties to continue updating and revising their military technology and doctrines in order to comply as best as possible with current norms of waging proper war. They exist as important expressions of sentiment. But now let's put that aside and deal with the reality. Hamas, in the interest of existing and fighting, will operate among civilians. Israel, in the interest of responding to rocket fire, will attempt to knock out Hamas even as it operates among civilians. And this is what we have to keep in mind when we see white phosphorus shells in residential areas. This is the reality of urban guerrilla warfare. And speaking of white phosphorus, this has become a catchphrase in the discourse surrounding the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. What people generally know is that white phosphorus can burn human tissue and is really painful when it does. What people don't seem to know is that white phosphorus is mostly used to, as you say, provide a smokescreen. In fact, white phosphorus is considered the most effective smokescreen substance in the standard military arsenal. Now, I've done a fair amount of research on the Goldstone Report, and I think much of it fits into this tired trend that I just talked about, where it really amounts to just saying, stop fighting. But there is still some interesting information to gather from it if you care to do the research. Newton talks about the strategic uses of white phosphorus and how it can even be a morally preferable strategy. By the way, Newton also quotes a Hamas commander. The quote is, the entire people of Gaza are the combatants, and therefore it is appropriate for us to issue warnings and then, even if they disregard them, to occupy their basement or their house or their backyard. Anyway, back to the subject of white phosphorus. Amnesty says that white phosphorus should never be used in civilian areas, but it also says that Hamas shouldn't be fighting in civilian areas. Well, Hamas is fighting in civilian areas. So what should the IDF do now if it needs to move its troops from point A to point B and there's a reasonable risk of drawing fire? Well, it can call in an airstrike. It can use white phosphorus with all its risks. It can move its troops without sufficient cover so that they're exposed to sniper fire and whatnot. Or it can just call off the offensive. Given these options, I can see the logic of using white phosphorus given that sufficient measures have been taken in advance to minimize civilian casualties like dropping leaflets, etc. And I, of course, would hope that some other new technology will be developed that doesn't pose a danger to people. For example, the IDF has developed a non-explosive dummy missile which it used during the operation in Gaza to counteract Hamas's tactic of getting civilians to stand on the roofs of buildings so that the IDF won't bomb them. <laughs>
خرجوا من منازلهم متوجهين الى منزل الجعابير يشكل دروعا بشرية في محاولة لمنع قصف What happens is that this dummy missile is launched at an empty area of the roof scaring the civilians off the roof and then when the area is clear the building which presumably conceals a tunnel or stores weapons or serves as a base of operations is bombed and destroyed. That's a positive development. Also, Israel has almost finished developing an air defense system called the Iron Dome, which is designed to intercept short-range rockets and artillery shells. The system detects rockets headed for populated areas, therefore constituting a threat, and then launches interceptor missiles, which lock onto the projectile, and then blow it up before it can cause any damage. The system has blind spots and is really expensive to operate, but it's also a positive development because it neutralizes the threat without harming Palestinian civilians. Mr. President, based on my knowledge and experience, I can say this. During Operation Cast Lead, the Israeli Defense Forces did more to safeguard the rights of civilians in a combat zone than any other army in the history of warfare.